everyone. Welcome to the newest episode of On That Note with Parker Whirling. Today's guests are two sisters who formed a pop rock duo in Denton, Texas. Their debut self-titled EP, Eaglin, is out the day after this episode airs, so it was really cool to talk to them about their anticipation going into this release. Before we start the episode, please make sure to like and subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. And you can follow me at Parker Whirling or at on that note underscore podcast. And on that note, please welcome Kenzie and Bailey from the pop rock duo Eaglin. All right, I'm sitting here with Eaglin, Bailey, and Kenzie, sisters, pop rock duo from Denton, Texas. Thank you guys for joining me for an episode of On That Note. Uh, it's very special for me and you guys because your debut self-titled EP is coming out the day after that this episode is released. And I love getting to talk to artists about uh, how they're feeling right before the EP or right before their single, their newest project comes out. Because sometimes, you know, they just put something out and I get to talk about their reaction to it. But I do love getting like the anticipation of them. So how are you guys feeling about your debut self-titled EP about to be released? Totally. Well, first of all, thank you so much for, for having us and for taking the time to talk to us. Um, we are over the moon. It's actually pretty emotional. Like I, I've been putting together just like videos and stuff and, and looking at old videos of Kinsey and I singing since, you know, we were like little kids and I, I can't even believe that we're about to release a body of work, you know, an EP form that people are going to get to listen to and we're going to get to share and, and have people be a part of the journey that we've kind of been on for so long. It's kind of overwhelming. I can't believe it. It's going to be amazing. Ken's, what about you? I'm so excited. I'm so excited to just have a body of work out there for people to listen to. I'm just, that's the main thing I'm excited about. People can finally listen to like more than one song. It's wild. Look, I've got, I've got this sunflower here. We have a, a song uh-huh. called Sun's Out. That, yeah, oh, right? Oh, really? It's called Sunflower? We have, no, we have a song called Sun's Out. And it's very like sunny, like fun, vibrant, and you asked about the EP and we're going to get to finally share that song. We wrote it like four years ago and it's just like, I can't wait for people to hear it. It's going to be. Wow. Well, you're fitting the vibe for sure with the sunflower. (laughs) Um, What is, what does it feel like to have songs that have been in your head for so long? Cause some people I talk to, they write a song in a week or less and then a month or two later it's out, but you guys are sitting on these things for years. Yeah, I mean, that's probably that's the craziest part. And I think like I brought up Suns Out because it's it might be the only song, Ken's correct me if I'm wrong, that we've been sitting on for a really long time. And we're going to release some more after our EP. That's sort of a project that we have in in the works that are going to be like some of our older stuff that no (laughs) one's ever heard. But it's really interesting because a lot of the songs on the EP, you know, four out of the five um, we wrote very recently. I mean, we wrote last year, like last summer. We recorded right. them last summer and we've just been kind of prepping for, you know, this year's summer release. But Sun's Out is that one song that we've been sitting on. We've recorded it in the studio a few times and just haven't been able to get it right. And it's I think it's there. So it's it's incredible. That one, that one for sure. It's it's a really, you know, it's a really cool feeling to be able to finally release it. Because like what you said, we've been sitting on it for so long. Right. Um, is there something that is about this new version of Suns Out that really sticks out compared to the previous ones? Like maybe you did something differently within the process of it? We did. We, yeah. yeah. We got, well, we had a new studio and the producers of that studio, they, it was kind of like, it was improvised. It was just in one day, we just, we were just feeling it and it just, it made itself really. It was really cool. It was honestly the best studio experience I've had. I love that you said it made itself because I feel like that's literally what it was. I mean, like we have, you know, we had this song. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward, but the first time we ever recorded it was like maybe three years ago. I had just moved to New York and Kinsey came out. We found the studio and we had these guys that were like, we want to develop you and we really want to help you like curate your sound. And we started with Suns <clears throat> Out and it ended up being something that 
was good, but just wasn't us. So mm. we just kind of we just kind of sat on it. We were like, you know, this is not necessarily like, uh, it's just not us, you know, and that's okay. It's like, you know, it was, I think it was very well done. But this time around, because we knew the song like the back of our hand, like we just kind of hit record and we just, we did things that we've never done. It like, it was just a completely different process. It was so easy. And I think one of the things about us, you know, um, as a as a band or a duo, is that we really kind of lean on some of our more organic skill. Like we we really like organic sounds, and we we have a lot of influences that um, you know, like Aretha, right? Like classic rock stuff. Um, that's very sort of stripped down and and hits you to your core. So this was really like the first time that we got to make a song like that you know, without like all the, it's, it's produced very well, but it's very organic. It's very raw. And I think it, it's, it's going to be, yeah, I just can't wait. I can't wait. I'm very excited. And, uh, something you said that struck me was, uh, it reminds me of this book I've been reading and it's called super attractor. And there's one chapter in there where it says good things can come easily. And I do think that as artists, sometimes we make things harder for ourselves to mm. like we think we have to do something this way uh or it has to sound like this but and you guys going through that process of you know letting other people come in and say okay maybe it should sound like this and it's like that's totally fine but at the end of the day maybe just being truthful to yourselves is what got the song uh to sound so good and if it was easy i think that just shows you weren't getting in your own way Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head. I love that. And it was, it was, you know, it is, it's us and the whole EP is very us, you know, like I think I mentioned like some of our influences, but the truth is, you know, we have pretty eclectic music taste. I mean, we listen to everything and our EP sounds very different song to song. Like I really genuinely feel like there's something for everyone um and we really we made it for everyone we made it for us we made it to share with our family and friends and you know with all of our sort of influences and inspiration in mind and you know I think it even the songs that were a little more you know time consuming took a minute to get right are still are still us so so uh would you say that you learned any lessons along the way during the creation process of this? I mean, having songs that are a lot older, some a little bit newer, like, what would you say, recording your debut uh, EP, what are some really major takeaways for you guys? I honestly, I like how we could get different sounds in different areas. Like, I feel like a lesson that I feel like we both learned is not to be so hard on ourselves because we're honestly our biggest critics. And if it's not perfect, we just kind of like, we just keep redoing it. But Sun's Out, it just, I think it sounds really good how it is now. And it was like totally improvised. We sang some songs from our EP in our bathroom and then in the studio in Bailey's room. It was just everywhere. And I, I kind of like how semi-chaotic the producing portion of our EP was yeah with the different I, sounds I totally agree like it's really funny because the first few songs that we recorded to like the last songs that we recorded our process completely changed like Kenzie mentioned like we were really in the studio we were very I mean we're perfectionists the two of us and you know we come by it honestly but we really care about our, our craft and we want to make sure that it's the best that it can be but we were focusing on maybe not the wrong things, but we were focusing in one area and really trying to curate like the perfect sound. So the way that we recorded was very like meticulous. And as we moved along, it was like, I'm gonna record these vocals in my bedroom and I'll just send them. Or like, I'll, you know, we'll get into the studio. Let's just give ourselves one day. And if we don't get it, we don't get it. And boom, you know, we have a record that's beautiful and amazing. Let's just do it in our bathroom. Like <laughs> versus like, you know the summer of last year where we were like no we need like three days per song like we really have to you know get it right and it's just so funny like 
we learned so much so much about recording you know over the past year that we just really didn't know and I think you just kind of have to do it to to understand you know your strengths and weaknesses as a recording artist which is something that we weren't until now you have to absolutely just do it like you said because (laughs) if if you I mean for me personally when I started recording I was similar to you guys and more of a perfectionist state of mind and eventually I just had to separate myself from that because it's it can be pretty detrimental to obsess over something that isn't really that important because uh, I mean I hate to say like don't let the don't let great be the enemy of good or something like that but there is something to be said for like it's better to have something that you enjoy maybe it's not perfect but also when you're so close to something you're going to judge it more or harshly than the way other people are going to judge it they're going to hear it and just be like wow that sounds really good that sounds like you but you're hearing all your experiences all the things that could have you know been a little bit better but no one else is hearing it that way right totally that's yeah. probably the tough that's got to be like lesson number 1 right like yeah, yeah. i mean I, again Look at you with like the tidbits of knowledge. That's amazing. Like yeah. all these little gems. But I've you're right. Picked like, up a few from the artists on this show for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. There you go. There you yeah. go. But no, you're exactly right. It's like it's gonna be great. And really, we're just you know trying to to present something that that feels true and and feels right. And I think that we're doing that. And we look back now and we're like, yeah, that song's awesome. It might have been awesome the first two times we recorded right. it too. Like who knows. Um, but we're just, we're over the moon. Like, we're so happy with what we have to share and it's, it all worked out. We learned some things along the way and now, you know, we know for next time. Yeah. And we've honestly gotten the best. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No. Yeah. Uh, I was saying we've just gotten the best product when we're having fun. Like not just, yeah. Stressing ourselves out when we're just having fun, we get the best product. That's something I picked up on. And (laughs) y'all's music is so fun when I first heard it. Uh, I think 23 was the song I heard. I was like, this is straight out of an early 2000s hit coming of age movie. Oh my oh, god! Thank you. Thank you so much. We released that last week, right? Yeah. We yeah, released yeah, it on yeah. Friday. Oh my gosh. We, that song, I mean, we, yes, I'm so, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for saying that. We love that song. We were so excited. We were going to wait and put it on the EP and we were like, mm-hmm. no, like, we really. Yeah, you surprised us, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. we did. <laughs> We did, we did. Yeah. What inspired that uh, that move right there to release it a little bit early? Um, I think we were just sort of, I don't know. Like, we really wanted to give it its moment. Like, as we recorded 23, 23 started off, it was literally just going to be an acoustic track. It was going to be an acoustic track. We really liked where it was sitting. Kinsey and I were focusing on, on our harmonies and stuff, you know, like at home and So we were, you know, fully set on doing it that way. And as we, you know, once we recorded it, once we started adding elements to it, like I laid down a lot of, you know, a few guitar parts that I feel like changed the vibe a little bit. We added some backup vocals that changed the vibe. We had a good friend of mine do some produce, you know, like produced it after the fact, which is like kind of not a thing. And he just took it to like this incredible place. And we were like, this song is needs to have its own moment <laughs> like mm-hmm. it was gonna be like a b-side and then we were like which it's an ep but you know we were just like wow like this this really needs to have have its own moment and so that was where we landed you know it's, it wasn't an acoustic track yeah you went with your gut there and you're like all right the song is speaking to us right now like you yeah. don't want to ignore that feeling Right. totally i mean it just it, it like it got bigger and bigger like i told you it started off like as an acoustic track and then like we hear it now and we're like this is like an early 2000s like to us right anthem <laughs> like this is like like we love it we're like this needs to you know have a little bit of, of spotlight so we were like this should be our third single and we're saving the other stuff for later absolutely so going back to a little bit what we were talking about earlier about learning from others, you worked with Mackenzie Smith, the Grammy Award winner, drummer, producer. He's worked with people like St. Vincent and Father John Misty and Regina Spector. You must have learned 
some pretty cool tidbits of information from a guy like that, right? Yeah, we learned a lot. We learned a lot from uh, the two of them, from McKinsey and, and Joey McClellan, who's co-owner of the studio that we recorded at. And, uh, you know, what's interesting about those two is they're veterans first and foremost, but they really were sort of on the Denton music grind for so long, which is like my heart and soul. I mean, I'm born and raised in Denton, Texas, North Texas. Um, and there's this music scene there that's just so rich. And, and I grew up going, like I was like five or six years old going to some of the shows, like going to like shows with uh, my aunt, like rock shows and stuff with bands that like they knew. And I think like, I'm talking in circles a little bit, but they like, they were really, they sort of, the two of them embodied like this time in my life where I was falling in love with music, like six, seven, eight years old, listening to all those like Denton gritty bands. So working with them was such a dream come true. You know, I was like, come on, it doesn't, it, at the time, really, it doesn't get much better than that. Like these guys have been doing it for so long. They've got the indie rock vibe that we love. And it was honestly, it was a pleasure. And we think, you know, we think they're incredibly talented. We're just really happy that they gave us the time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they played a huge and role. Something. Oh. Yeah. They played a huge role in us, like, having fun and improvising. Especially, like, on Suns Out, it was not supposed to sound like that. But it sounds so great now, in our opinion. Yeah. I think totally. good producers allow the artists to be the most themselves they can be. Because it can be pretty uncomfortable uh, being vulnerable and sharing your your art in front of people and if you're working with a producer that makes you feel for whatever way like not not ready to be yourself it's gonna be hard to get a product that you're really excited about and it sounds like they really did a good job giving you that space to do what you want to do absolutely and I, I think you know, I was sort of, I didn't even realize that I was doing this, but I was kind of on the sidelines while we were recording, you know, all of our music, also sort of taking notes on what it meant to produce your own music and what it meant to see your own vision through. Um, and that's something that, you know, I was, I'm, I'm really grateful for. That's probably the most valuable takeaway from working with them is that, you know, I now know where uh, that, that, production journey should start and what it should look like along the way and and where it should you know um it, how to how to bring my vision to fruition like from start to finish so uh i yeah i I'm, i was really really grateful for for that experience and you know we're looking forward to i don't know dabbling a little bit in the producing world as well <laughs> with our own stuff we'll start there so. hell yeah yeah i'm sure yeah uh, <laughs> that was a really cool experience to learn how to like to see the production end of end of things and then take that into the future doing your own stuff yeah absolutely and everybody has a different style you know we've learned we've worked with a few producers now and some can be sort of you know like way more hands-on in terms of like every single piece and they're very meticulous about it um, some are more hands off and they're like, let's just see where the music takes us. Let's, let's work it out. So it's been really cool. You know, we've, we've been exposed to some really, uh, cool environments and some really cool people and it's only going to make us better, you know? Exactly. And you never know, you know, through these people who you'll work with again, who you'll meet because of them. And it's always good to, uh, pick the people that you want to be around because like some you know it can be easy for some people to think oh this guy's done this she's done that I need to hang around that energy but because everyone does things so differently just because you hang around with somebody who isn't really giving you the right energy but they are doing well it might not work for you and I think you know that's a kind of a resistant thing to do you want to be working with people that give you that good space absolutely absolutely i love that no you're exactly right you know it's like we've oh my goodness i mean the amount of people that we've met that were like you know this person and you work with this person and that must mean that there's some but at the end of the day like you have to align your own strengths with others like you have to really play to each other's strengths you have to make sure that you know there's some you know common denominator that's not just oh i like this or that sounds cool to me it's like no like you know, is it similar to what you're doing? Is it similar to what you want to achieve or whatever? So that's a that's a hard skill to 
develop for sure. And I think we're, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. It takes time. That's uh, time and experience. That's all. You just got to be patient. That's right. Cool. Well, that's going to take us over to the last five here where I'll just ask you guys five questions and we'll be done. All right. Good. All right. Number one is in the studio or playing live. Ooh. Kenzie. I mean, as of now, I kind of have a little bit of stage fright, so I'd say in the studio. My goal, my end goal is to be able to play live. Like, that sounds really fun, but right now it's the studio. I got you. I, I also do not play live very often because mm-hmm. I feel a lot more comfortable in the studio. Mm-hmm. I'll say I'll say live. I think, and actually, Kinsey and I have kind of only ever, like, played live, you know? Like, we play, I think we play best together. I think we play best when we're on the spot and we have to, like, whip it out. Oh, um, yeah. And I, I really look forward to playing some live shows because I think we've come so far just the two of us and how we work together and how we perform together um yeah live for sure the studio for some reason can just be sometimes it can be stressful I don't know I I can see how yeah in certain situations especially if you've if you've got a time frame you got to get things done by yeah that Mm -hmm. could be stressful but I I love the studio to me because it feels like anything can happen like any uh you can turn nothing into something and you can mm. write your favorite song that day and and record Ooh. it and, or record it in a way you never expected to record it. Kind of like the way Sons or 23 was with you guys. Right. Yeah, totally. Right. Totally. But yeah, that's, me. that's just how that. I feel about it. Yeah. No, right on. Well, question number two is what do you think is a perfect album front to back? Ooh, Kenz, you want to take this one? I have to go through my Rolodex of albums. Mm-hmm. I think I actually have two. It's Amy. You're talking about like artists that we like. Yeah, like an albums. album of okay. albums. Yes, yeah, front the to back. Okay, right. No skips. Um, no skips, exactly. <laughs> I can't remember what the title is, but it's Back to Black. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, and then Megan Trainer. <laughs> I'm wow. sorry, this is a bop. Megan Trainer's uh title. I think that's the name of that. It has all the Dear Future Husband, all about that face. I'm sorry. Sure. It's it's so good. You're probably it's the so first good. person to ever say Megan Trainer Megan Trainer <laughs> on this <Yeah>. show. <laughs> it's so that. good. Every song's good a you. bop. It has like I'm gonna lose you with John Legend. Like Come on. All right, I'm going to have to go give sure. it give it a chance because I really only know all about that bass. Oh, no. See, so you got to listen to more Megan. <laughs> got to listen to more Megan. <laughs> She's right. changing the industry, as we know. Um, <laughs> I'll say I'll say my my album front to back. It's got to be like a, like any Beatles album, probably like the White Album. I'll listen mm. to every single song on the White Album. It's, it might be my favorite Beatles album. Um, all things must pass. George Harrison. Wow. There are no skips on that album. Like, there's yeah, you can listen to that thing. We're in totally uh, separate worlds with you two right now. This is hilarious. <laughs> I know, but Kinsey is you know no yeah I don't the Megan Trainer thing was I wouldn't have said that you would say that <laughs> you know I, that, I wouldn't have guessed that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. That was a that was a wild card, Kinsey. It's I underrated. Know. I had and to, I would say underrated. Amy too. I yeah. would say Back to Black as well. That's, of course, like, I mean, we love Mark Ronson. We love Amy so much, so for sure. Oh, and then probably there's an Etta James record that I, I love. I think it was just, like, all of the, like, remasters or whatever. It wasn't an actual, like, album. It was something that released when I was, like, five or six. And I'll listen to that, like, all day long. And I still do. Gotcha. It's my comfort yeah. album. I've never really listened to Etta James, which is uh, a weak, Ooh. a weakness for me. So the good thing about interviewing all these people is they always give me new music to listen to. So I'm gonna go check out yeah. Etta James and <laughs> uh, and Megan Trainer, obviously <laughs> in the same category. <laughs> they're up there together. Yeah, they're, exactly. People say they're yeah, they're kind of neck and neck. <laughs> well, those are great <laughs> in terms answers. Of legacy. <laughs> Yeah. So question number three is who's your dream artist or producer to work with? Ken's. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. 
Probably Rex Orange County. Ooh. Right now, it's between Rex Orange County and Chance the Rapper. Okay, very cool. I love Rex Orange County. Mm-hmm. And it'd be cool to be on a Kanye West song. Oh, but, man, yeah. Yeah, because he's just... That yeah. would be cool. Yeah, that'd be really That's cool. A, those are good answers. Yeah, those are... They're kind of spread out a little bit. Rex Orange County, I definitely see, because all of his music... Like, y'all's music sounds pretty... Uh, I don't want to say similar, but complementary to each other. Ooh, Ooh thank yes. you. It's we like love very him. happy and like feel good. I mean, he's got some sadder songs as well, yeah. but I think of Sunflower, you know, that song is incredible. That sounds like something oh, you guys would write. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah, uh, it's adjacent to, to Rags, and we have some sadder songs as well. And I'll actually say... Uh, you know, like coming up, we have this EP. It's very summery. It's very, you know, boppy, whatever. And we're so excited about it. We think it's a great representation of us. But Kinsey's songwriting has like completely taken off. And she, we're going to release some of, some of her originals here in the next uh, year or so. And I think that the Rex Orange County thing is going to make even more sense if it doesn't already. Um, but I'll say my dream artist, it's got to be P Mac. Paul McCartney, obviously. Oh, I was like, I don't know P-Mac. I was like, who is that? Yeah. Yeah, that's, what, that's actually, that's that's what he goes by. So Yeah, yeah that's, what you, that's what his friends uh, call him. Yeah, his that's close what friends. his friends call him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would yeah, be sick. I'd, I'd say, love to see that. I'd say Paul and Rod Stewart. Like, I love Faces. This, they're so good. Um, I've never so, yeah, really Rod. listened to Faces either. You gotta do, but you know what I'm talking about. It yeah, was like yeah, yeah. Rod and Ronnie Wood. Yeah. So go listen to Faces. That's another album that I'd say front to back is just so good. Like Glad and Sorry is my favorite song of all time. So I'll say those two. Some of the classic rock stuff. We get into it. Um, and then producer Mark Ronson all day. Yeah. All day. He's yeah, he's, he's a amazing. genius, and it's only like within the last five years I feel like he became sort of a household name i mean he's still not even a household name but every musician artist knows him now and it's like but he's been doing it for a long time yeah i mean amy right that was kind of his big Mm -hmm. his big um that's when he got on my radar so yeah i love mark he's incredible i love producers who uh work with so many different kinds of artists like he did yes a queens of the stone age record which is so so different yes and he did bruno mars like come on exactly that's what makes it like that's what makes a producer great when you can pivot mm-hmm. like that like genre to genre and make it fully them like it doesn't sound necessarily like, maybe you don't know that it's mark ronson that you know pr- or maybe you do because you're like this is so good <laughs> but yeah i totally i totally agree well, I always like to try and see from my perspective who the guests I have on, who they would work well with. And uh, the one that really just came to mind, and I've never mentioned this on the podcast, and I'm surprised it sh- like struck me, but it would be Natasha Bedingfield. Ooh, that's interesting. Because of that Kins, early you know 2000s Natasha. vibe. Okay. Mm. Kins, what do you think? Pocket full of sunshine, right? That's right. What'd you say? Pocket full of sunshine. Yes. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I know. You're like, we'll we'll Natasha. see if she lets you know, we'll see if she gets to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We yeah, we'll we'll call her. We'll, we'll think she about it. She's got yeah. she's got pipes, yeah. Natasha would be incredible. And then like like Third Eye Blind. We'll throw oh, that in there. Oh, okay. And, like that was like heavy third eye blind was heavy, heavy. Like, yeah, that was my inspo for twenty three for sure. Gotcha. The, yeah, like, I hear that now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love them. They're great. Very nice. Well, and question- Natasha. Yeah, Natasha is awesome. I got to be honest. I really don't know much more than that one song. I, Me there's either. a couple. There's a couple on the radio, <laughs> but I mean, she's just that song in general is like god tier. Yeah. No, it's great. I can't deny. I can't deny it's great. I can't. <laughs> well, question four is what's on y'all's musical rotation right now? Ooh, a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. It's my playlist. My summer playlist has has every every genre, every everything on it. I couldn't. I can't think of like just specific. Actually, yes, I can. Um, Rex Orange County. I listen to a lot of Queen actually, Ooh. and Ooh. Aerosmith. That is all. I've I've grown a love for Queen pretty recently, surprisingly. 
So they're all on my summer playlist. You're late. You're late I to know. the party. I know, but every song that's actually it's better no late skips than never, on their though. songs. Right, right, right. But it's just a little bit of everything. I'm trying to see my Spotify playlist is like on my TV. I'm yeah, trying to yeah, see what, check it out. What I've been listening to. Let's see, what do we have here? Ooh. Yep, it's the same thing I've been listening to for like ten years. We got the, we got the Kooks, uh, okay. you know. Let's see who is that. A little bit of Beck is on there. Group but love, group love. Yeah, like just like the summery summer summer tunes. Um, who's new? I wish I had someone new for you. I think Eaglin is in heavy rotation there right now. Go. We're yeah, listening to yeah, a lot of her. Of course. I gotta say, it's a shameless plug, but listening to my sister sing like is my favorite thing. So Aww. anytime she, it's true. It's true. I'm not even saying it to like you know. I like I mean it. Like I love listening to Kinsey. I'll listen to like just raw stuff of Kinsey just like singing, and it's just like oh my god, it like evokes like feeling and emotion. And it's so good. You're so good, Thank Kinsey. You, baby. You're, you're amazing. That's beautiful. <laughs> you're amazing. You do have a beautiful voice, and it really does fit the happy vibe of the, of all of your material. Like it's just thank you. Very thank versatile. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So the uh, last. Honestly, oh sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No. 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 You go. Uh, I was gonna say Bailey killed twenty three. I love listening to it because it's the first song we've released where she's lead <laughs> vocals. I I feel like if I feel like it needed her voice for that. You just, you have such Thank a, you. it's just so good. It's so good. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. This yeah. is just a, we're just going to gas each other up. For the yeah, we're just going to gas each other gonna, up. For the oh, yeah. Of the no, yeah. That's so yeah. sweet because sometimes <laughs> I have people on here. They're a little more like, you know, they're a little more self-deprecating, which is all good. But I'm all about uh, the love. All about the love. Yeah. You got to spread it. Right, right. I love it. Who has time for that, you know? Nobody. I don't. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Well, the last question here is, what is your favorite decade of music? Ken's? I'd, I'd probably say the 90s. Mm. Early what? 90s. What? Yeah, what are you well, listening to from the 90s? Well, okay. Well, I'm thinking of people, I don't really know which specific decades. I don't know. I feel like I listen to a lot of 2000s and 80s, so I'm just trying to meet in the middle. I'm just trying to meet in the middle. Mm. So it has, like, mm. as some of some of late 80s and then early 2000s you're like when know. was queen popular i don't know <laughs> <laughs> when was always you can say every day kenzie's like i don't know when aerosmith was a thing every day yeah. 80s no it's the 80s i think it was the, it might have been that we don't know well <laughs> might, that, you know it was the 80s and then they came back with run dmc in the 90s Ooh. and then they blew up again and that's what happened see that's why this. music to history king you're right. killing it. I love it. Thank <laughs> you so much. No, that's good. Yes. No, you're right. I think uh, my favorite decade of music, probably like the 60s, like the wall mm-hmm. of sound. Phil, Phil Spector, if he wasn't, you know, rest yeah. in peace and, you know, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, that whole but situation. I really, the whole situation yeah. is, is unfortunate. I'm sorry that I brought him up, but I got to okay. say, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the Ronettes, uh, the Ronettes, like, you know, that girl, the girl group stuff is so good and, and. You know, I love, like, Motown, of course, the Beatles, you know, Chuck Berry, what I, like, all of it, all of it. I love it so much. So, like, 60s and 70s, I think, is more my my vibe. Mm. Oh, okay. that's, that's the popular answer, I would say, is 60s, 70s. Is it really? Yeah. But uh, some Basic. people... Some, I'm just uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some people... But, like, uh, why would you... Yeah. They forget that 2010s is an answer. Ooh, right. I know. Which, I was gonna say like the two thousands are tough to. It's like you're so close to it, but at the same yeah. time, I love new artists. Like I never understood people who were like, "Oh man, music back in the day that was that was when it was it. Now it's all trash." <laughs> it's like, come on, don't have that perspective on it. Yeah, right. no, you're so right. I don't agree with that. And now that no, I like I agree with what you're saying. But I took like the two thousand tens. I mean, what did we get then? Like a lot of like folk indie stuff, which is my jam. Right, yeah. like, didn't we get like we had like Arcade Fire, Mumford and, and Sons, like, the got Fleet Foxes, huge. Mumford and Sons, like we had all of that, and so yeah, I think you're, yeah, that's my new answer. Gotcha. Well, I oh, no, it. I didn't mean for you to change. <laughs> I just that my answer would be split between <laughs> '60s and 2010s, and really only '60s, pretty much just because of the Beatles, if we're being honest. Yes, absolutely. You can't see my wall art, but 
It's pretty Beatles heavy in this room. Amazing. We're on the same page. I can feel Wait, the energy. Wait, what's your favorite Beatles? What's your favorite Beatles album? I have to ask you. I've thought about this for a while now, and uh, it's impossible. It's changed, but now I gotta say it's Revolver. Okay, all right. It used to be so Doctor Robert. Uh, so, oh, Doctor Robert's incredible, and it's a very yeah. underrated song. I think I think it should get way more hype than it does. But uh, I used to say Abbey Road, but nowadays, like, I'm too. I don't want to just throw on Abbey Road. It feels like too much of uh of an investment. But Revolver is to me the White Album condensed. Ooh, ooh, that is amazing. That's amazing. But I see the White Album is great. I've grown a new appreciation for it lately. There's just so much to choose from. Yeah. Know? There's so much to choose from. Magical Mystery Tour is a good one, too. Yeah, that is an underrated one. It's got some weird ones, but uh, Strawberry yeah. Fields Forever is like, come on. Yeah, it's good. It's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> we can talk offline. We'll, I know. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll text yeah. about it. We'll do, we'll do the debates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Bailey and Kenzie from Eaglin, thank you guys for joining me for an episode of On That Note. It was an absolute pleasure having you. Everybody needs to go listen to your new EP, which is coming out the day after this episode comes out. So most Ooh. likely everyone will be able to listen to it when it's out. It's such a fun early 2000s hit coming of age film soundtrack and you need to go listen to it. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. This is so much fun. Of course. You're amazing. Oh my God. I love you guys. Seriously, thank you all for coming on. It, it was we an love absolute you too. pleasure. Yeah. It's all love. All right. Here. Yeah, absolutely. It's all love. It's all, all love. Right. Now go listen to Megan Trainer. Go That's listen right. to Megan Trainer. Everyone go listen to <laughs> Megan Trainer right now. That's the gist. And, <laughs> and Sean Kingston, another yeah. shout out. But yeah, um. thank you guys. Have a great night, and I'll talk to y'all later. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. And back in 23 Thank you again for joining me for another episode of On That Note with Parker Whirling. If you haven't yet, please make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. And you can even leave a comment down below to let me know who you're listening to. On that note, I'll see you guys next time.